So yeah, the Toyota owner's 400. Let's talk a bit about it. There's a lot of different headlines that come from this race. None of them particularly good, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and say a bit of a hot take, which is no matter how good the race was, it was always going to come across as a bit of a dud. But let's get into it, shall we? I watched it live for the first two stages, then I noticed I was falling asleep because, well, the point thanks to daylight savings and, you know, eating, I think, triple or four times the chocolate that the National Health Service in the UK recommends. Uh, I, I just needed to go to bed. So then I woke up. I recorded this on Monday, on Monday morning, and finished watching the race, watched the final leg. I did have the results spoiled for me, but I did open YouTube and I saw um, Eric e. Stepp's uh, thumbnail and the thing about calls. And then I saw the photo that uh, Black Flag Matter posted of um, MTJ. So I was like, ah, this will be interesting then. And it wasn't. It, it wasn't particularly interesting for me. I was surprised that the calls they were talking about, one of them was the Kyle Busch, well, touching the wall, which I, I thought was a weird caution to throw. But it seemed like the big thing about the race was a controversy at the end of it. The fact that Denny Hamlin did, he did jump the start. There's no two ways about it, he did jump the start. But Richmond's always had the dramas for this, including the Toyotas. What is it, the itchy arm? That was Richmond. It's... It just buys into that narrative and it adds to the Denny Hamlin villain arc, which... Look, NASCAR needs the villains and he's happy to play that role. Especially since Carl Busch has sort of had a redemption arc. It leaves Denny as the villain front and centre now. But uh, yeah, second repeat winner of the season. It's a shame that it wasn't Martin Truex that won it because he was in fine form all all race long. Chase Elliott gets a top five, which is good for him. Carl Larson gets back up to third, which after being spun out, well, being spun out, he checked up and got run over by Bubba Wallace, who then ended up dropping way down the order in that final stop. Uh, what was he, 13th in the end? Yeah, I, I don't think that was ever part of the plan. <laughs> I know there are some people who are like, oh, he did it to help his boss out, but his boss wouldn't be happy with a car that was running in the top five all of a sudden dropping down out of the top ten. Let's talk about a few more different aspects of it. Um, yeah, Chase Elliott ran well. It was good to see him running somewhat well. Alex Bowman, despite dropping the lap down, was in some good form. He just got unlucky with cautions and uh, the pit stops. And, yeah, the almost unsung hero of the race was the uh, wet weather tyres. They're not called rain tyres, they're not called wet tyres, they're called the wet weather spec, aren't they? Because they want to be specific about the fact that they're not running in the rain, they were running in the dry, when the track was still drying. And, in addition to that, um, it can run in some light drizzle. But it's the first time we see this in competitive action. I believe we saw it for the heat, did we, in the um, All-Star race last year. And it's good to see this. It, it is, because I think that NASCAR should be able to run in more all-weather scenarios. I don't think them pushing races back to the Monday, in spite of the Monday Truex Jr. meme, uh really helps out and you saw that with the day 500 that some of the momentum that they had going into the season got stalled by the fact that they had to run to the Monday. Now I'm not suggesting super speedways like Daytona or Talladega should be running the wet. What I'm suggesting is at tracks like what we've got here at Richmond at Martinsville next week for example maybe at Phoenix you know the ones that are a bit less banked we should see more wet of a running now the ideal would be that you'd be able to get it on more and more of the shorter ovals I would I would assume that somewhere like Gateway might be able to do it then start to work it up to some of the flatter intermediates maybe it would be cool to see that at places like Nashville a mile and a half but overall it's fine right now I like it 
And if you were an F1 fan, I think the main thing that you go from this race with is, well. This is going to be manipulated, man. Okay, thanks for watching, folks. Uh, hope to see you around. Bye for now.